Well, Rob Miller is the director of the Cuba Solidarity Campaign, and he joins us now. Thanks very much, Dee, for coming and speaking to us here on the Arise News Hour. The highest level talks between America and Cuba for 35 years, just how important are they? Well, they're incredibly welcome, I think, following the announcements from President Obama and uh, President Raul Castro on the 17th of December. Everybody's been watching for actual real developments, and now we're seeing the first fruits of those initial comments uh, made in December. We very much hope that this will not only see a thawing, but we'll see the full normalisation of relations between the two countries, something that's been long overdue after 50 years of a US blockade. There are, of course, many different strands to normalizing relations with Cuba. It'll clearly be a slow and cautious process. But beyond these talks, um, so far, what has this thaw in relations meant for the Cuban people? Well, so far it's meant that for, certainly for the million-odd Cuban Americans that they can travel much more freely to uh, their homeland, to Cuba, to visit relatives. They can also send a, a much greater uh, level of remittances back to Cuba. That's increased fourfold. And they can bring back uh, more goods uh, from Cuba back to the United States. So in terms of very uh, small-scale uh, enterprise in Havana, uh, in, in the provinces, you'll see a flourishing of, of that kind of level of restaurants, uh, small-scale enterprises servicing tourists and so forth, with immediate... Uh, increase in the, the amount of dollars coming into the island. So that's an immediate uh, change. Obviously, the Cubans would like uh, to have a normal relationship with uh, the superpower neighbour, something that's uh, been uh, stopped by the US. So we're looking for more changes, particularly on the United States side. Indeed, and President Obama called on uh, Congress to um, do away with the trade embargo, something that a lot of Republicans don't want, though. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot to be sorted out. I mean, there's Guantanamo Bay, uh, occupied land in Cuba. There's there's the Cuban Adjustment Act, which allows Cuban emigrants to the United States to have preferential treatment when they arrive uh, into the United States. So that encourages illegal trafficking across the Straits of Florida, something that only applies to Cuban nationals and is, is, means that Mexicans, Haitians, El Salvadorians do not get the same uh, policy where if they arrive uh, on uh, US soil, they are pretty much guaranteed citizenship. Now, of course, the, the Cuban-American Senator Marco Rubio has said he will resist this with everything he's got. And so clearly removing that Cold War scar tissue uh, it, it's, that's developed, as you said, over a long period is going to take a long time. I mean, can President Obama use his legal power to issue executive orders to get around Congress? I think there's a lot they can do in terms of hollowing out the blockade legislation. For example, the... Um, the, the listing of Cuba on the uh, list of uh, so-called terrorist states is up for review, and that's something that Obama has done, and that process has been put into place. I think we're talking about a process that, once you move in that direction, will lead to changes. And there's very little, really, that people like Rubio and Ross Letton and the other major senator who's opposing these measures will be able to do about that. But there's a long way to go. This isn't going to be something that's sorted out in the next few months. It's going to take years. As I said, there's the issue of migration, there's Guantanamo Bay, there's the whole trade legislation. At the moment, the changes that have been uh, it, taken in, uh, by the United States are one way. For example, banks can work in, in Cuba. Cuban banks can't work in the United States. There's still the question of uh, free uh, tourist travel by American citizens. That's not allowed still at this moment. You have to go under license. So it's the one country that, Cuban, uh, that American citizens cannot visit is Cuba. So there's a long way to go in this process, but we very much hope that Obama has started the process. And we think that right-minded US politicians will see the benefits for both parties to a, a, a further normalizing of these relations. As we've said, relations haven't been normal for decades. Why now specifically is this happening? Is it to do with the fact that oil price means that Venezuela's support for Cuba isn't what it once was? No, I don't think so. I think the need has, has come from... You, the, the pressure has come from United States business. And essentially, Cuba is a gateway to Latin America. Without having normalised relations or better relations with Cuba, the Latin American governments, the presidents, the left-leaning presidents across the region have made it very clear that they will not accept uh, the US to... Uh, engage at the upcoming uh, Organization of American uh, uh, States Summit in Panama in April. And therefore, the uh, US had to sort out this situation with Cuba because they need to trade with, with Latin America. And I think that's where the main pressure has come. You have to remember that Russia, China, Venezuela, etc., they're big players. China in particular has just signed a number of accords with the region. And you, from a US business perspective, hold on a minute, this is our hemisphere, we should be in there. And therefore they had to resolve the Cuba issue. And that's why I think there's been this momentum for Obama to take action now. Rob Miller, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.